Ladies and gentlemen, we are gathered here today at Woke United Methodist to mourn the demise of another career in the mainstream media. This passing is extremely difficult because it's largely gone unnoticed. It has been four days and most media outlets are just now reporting this devastating news. As deacons at Woke United Methodist, we are making it our top priority to bring awareness to this tragedy. At this time, we ask all of you to bow to the woke oak tree, hold the hand of the birthing person next to you, or the handle of your emotional support shovel as we observe a moment of silence to recognize the failed career of Brother James Corden. Another one bites the dust. Poor Jamie Corden. He almost had me convinced. For months, he has been trying to convince us that leaving CBS was a decision that he made all on his own. KC, stop for a second. Who in the hell is Jim Gordon? I apologize. I apologize. That's my bad. I should have known most normal people could not identify James Corden in a one-photo lineup. I'm not sure where this obsession came from with late night hosts and names starting with the letter J. You have Jimmy the Failure on NBC, Jimmy the Kimmel on ABC. You have Jamie Corden on CBS, but his career has officially been eulogized. Since networks seem to be obsessed with the letter J, maybe CBS will replace James Corden with Jesus. But I wouldn't count on that though. From what I understand, CBS, they had decided to replace James Corden with some lame-ass trivia show produced by Stephen Colbert. Yeah, that's sure to generate the ratings. You would be better off airing infomercials featuring the Swiffer. It'd be a hell of a lot more entertaining. Put Joy Reid on a Swiffer, let her ride around the studio cleaning dust. Maybe she will ride so fast her wig will fall off, bringing smiles to the faces of all seven people who are watching. The addition of James Corden to the Woke Cemetery, it is bigger than just the demise of one wanker spanker's media career. We have seen late night hosts come and go. Hell, it's only been a few months since Travis Noah abandoned the Daily Show of Failure. Since his departure, Comedy Central has been begging someone, anyone, to occupy the throne of that dump. They can't find anyone. That's never happened in the history of late night television. Late night shows... They used to be the crown jewel. Everyone wanted that job. Just think about what's happened in late night over the last couple of years. Conan O'Brien, he leaves TBS to focus on podcasting. No replacement. TBS, they fire Samantha Bumblebee because she couldn't attract a room full of Donnie Lemons to a fresh corn on the cob. No replacement. James Corden voluntarily leaves CBS. Yeah, voluntarily, sure. James Corden leaves CBS. No replacement. There is a reason James Corden is not being replaced. There is a reason his ratings over the last two years crashed to the point of no return. Now, before I explain, let me get into the sponsor for today's video, my friend Mark Gonzalez over at First National Bullion. Have you guys noticed prices at the grocery store lately? I haven't personally since I'm clueless when it comes to grocery shopping, but I see the bill. I listen to my girlfriend complain every time she gets home from the grocery store. No matter what these experts say, inflation right now is through the roof. There is so much uncertainty right now surrounding the U.S. dollar. Countries like China, Russia, they're trading in their own currencies. What does that mean for the American dollar? If history's any guide, it ain't good. Doesn't matter how much money you have, rising inflation can make your dollar worthless. Luckily, there is a perfect hedge against inflation available to us. Gold and silver. My friend Mark Gonzalez over at First National Bullion has plenty of both in stock. Unlike these other companies who exchange your paper dollars for a nice piece of paper in return, First National Bullion, they have the real deal, physical precious metals in stock that will be delivered to you. Mark can even help you put gold and silver into your individual retirement account. When you invest with First National Bullion, they send you actual gold, actual silver. They've been in business for 16 years, and my friend Mark Gonzalez, he is an expert when it comes to protecting your hard-earned money. Reach out to Mark today by clicking the link in the description below. He will give you a call personally to help you protect yourself against the decline of the dollar and rising inflation. Okay, let's get back to James Corden. Hey, it's me, Jamie C., not to be confused with Chrissy C., who still has a job in TV. Kind of. Believe it or not, James Corden, 
He used to draw good ratings for CBS. His first year back in 2015, he averaged 1.4 million viewers. That is an excellent number, considering the show's on at 1 a.m. when most normal people are asleep. James Corden, he quickly proved to CBS that he was able to relate to people who choose to identify with the gender unemployed. For the first four or five years, James Corden was able to maintain that average. His most watched show was the episode following David Letterman's retirement, where James Corden drew four million viewers. But then, it happened. It's the same thing that happened to The Daily Show. Same thing that happened to both Jerk and Jimmy's. Same thing that happened to ESPN. Doctors at Woke Memorial Hospital, they diagnosed James Corden with a terminal case of OMB. Orange Man Bad! The woke fungus completely infected the show. Jamie C., he went from producing comedic segments like Carpool Karaoke, Drop the Mic, The Bold and the Lyrical. He went from producing comedy to producing segments like The Plight of My White Privilege, I Put the Race in Mythical Racism, Oscar Meyer Belongs in the Buns. I pulled a few segments that are considered classic bits of comedy in the community of wanker spankers because normal people to forget James Corden existed. Remember, this was produced with the intent to be funny. You tell me if this is comedy. Hopefully, CBS will allow these clips to go through, but watch for yourself. You have an amazing tool to help fight structural racism. You're right. I have my celebrity. Oh, no. My platform? Oh, God, no. Nobody actually watches this show. It plays in rooms where people have fallen asleep. What? Well, you, well tell me, what do you mean? What, what tools do I have? Actually, the tool that you have is so powerful, you're probably not even aware of it. Is it? My, oh, there's no, I don't, I don't, I don't want this to come out as arrogant. Is it? Is it my charisma? But when you think about, when you think about the casual racism that's been pervasive over the past 12 months, then we can start to see the link between language and action. There are real consequences to repeatedly hearing hateful speech. People get hurt and people die. <laughs> Someone please explain to me what is so funny about a guy who was born and raised in London, England, having the audacity to lecture me about racism in America. That would be like me lecturing people in England about their weird obsession with the royal family. I'm not from there. I don't know the culture. From what I can tell, James Corden, he moved to America in late 2014 or early 2015. So what the hell does he know about race relations in this country? The woke fungus did what it does best. It eliminated the audience. Over the last 12 months, James Corden, he has surpassed 1 million viewers three times. One of those was his farewell show last Thursday, which drew 1.4 million. Now the media, the media is celebrating that number like it's some kind of success when it's actually a huge embarrassing failure. His final show, drew the same ratings that he used to average before he became a member of Woke United Methodist. Ratings for the final season of Jamie C. on CBS were down to 806,000 viewers. Now, as you guys know, I am no expert in the field of math, so I contacted our resident math expert here on the channel, Mina Kimes, to help with this difficult equation. Hey, KC, it's Mina. I consulted with my fellow nerds. This represents a drop of 43%. But before I let you go, did you watch the NFL draft last week? There were a record number of black quarterbacks taken in the first round. I was so excited. The batteries died in my cucumber. Like I said in the beginning, the demise of James Corden, it is irrelevant when you look at the bigger picture. Since last year, Jamie C. has claimed that he was leaving CBS of his own volition. In my opinion, that is 100% bullshit. According to the New York Post, CBS was losing over $20 million every year producing the Late Late Show a failure. The show was generating $45 million in revenue while it cost $65 million to produce. The reason CBS is replacing James Corden with some guaranteed-to-fail trivia show 
It has nothing to do with television ratings. I'm sure CBS knows this show won't attract Listerine to the mouth flatulence of Sun Hostin, but the ratings are irrelevant. CBS, they could draw 200,000 viewers with this new show, and it would still make more money than James Corden. Hell, James Corden, he managed to lose more money than the WNBA dump. Let me show you something. Take a look at this graph. Credit to Axios for putting this together. This graph, it shows advertising revenue for the major late night talk shows. When James Corden started back in 2015, revenue was, revenue was close to $1 billion. Fast forward seven years later, advertising revenue is down to a cool $342 million. Why? Why do you think that is? Because no one is watching late night television. This is the bigger picture I'm talking about. The demise of James Corden, that is just the symptom to the larger problem. James Corden can claim all he wants, that leaving CBS was his decision. He says he wants to be back in England with his family. I don't doubt the validity of that claim, but the truth is, James Corden, he would have been gone either way. CBS wasn't about to renew his contract. Why in the hell would they renew the guy that's losing $20 million every year? James Corden could work for free and CBS would still lose millions of dollars on this dump. And this is not just a James Corden problem. This is a major problem throughout late night television. Both Jimmys, they are contracted through 2025 and 2026. You think executives at NBC and ABC aren't considering eliminating both late night hosts? Jimmy the Kimmel's ratings are so bad, he is being beaten in the ratings by the NBA pregame show. Jimmy the Kimmel, he doesn't make the top 20 on his own network. He's on broadcast television, free TV, and he ranks outside the top 100. The woke fungus has absolutely destroyed the late night genre. Stephen Colbert, his deal is up for renewal in August, and to be honest with you, he'll probably get renewed for now. But how much longer can this go on? Late night, it used to be a cash cow for television networks. Now, it is a drain. But KC, late night shows do big numbers on social media. Yeah, yeah. Who cares? You know who doesn't care? The networks and companies who spend millions of dollars advertising on these failing shows. Late night is at risk of becoming extinct in the next five years. And it's not because the landscape of television has changed. That has something to do with it, but that's only a small part. Late night TV is declining because they allowed themselves to become infected with the woke fungus. If you can think of another reason that makes sense, you let me know in the comments below. Like, subscribe, share this video. I appreciate you guys for always doing that. I also appreciate all the support from you guys over the weekend. The vast majority of you understood where I was coming from with those stupid ass pronouns. Now, when it comes to Twitter, I'm waiting right now on Twitter to verify my account. Once that process is complete, all videos will go live every day on Twitter. Now, of course, everything will also remain here on YouTube as well. But anyway, enjoy your evening. I'll see you guys tomorrow.